My name's Kirsty. I'm from Inverness in the north of Scotland and I was part of the third and final Spirit of 2012 Youth Advisory Panel. Hello, my name is Carl Kanadu. I'm Sana. I'm from High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire. Well, uh, my name is uh, David Asandrish-Kavichus, although I am known as Darby. I'm Michael. I've been on the panel for two and a half years. I'm Festus. I'm 25. Yeah, I think I'm 25. Uh, and I'm from Enfield. My name's Beth. I am from the northwest. Hi, my name is Thomas Copeland. I'm 22. I'm from Belfast in Northern Ireland. My name is Alice. I am a producer and I came across the youth panel. I was in one of the first youth panels and we started in 2015. So I'm Ruth Hollis and I'm Chief Executive of Spirit of 2012. I think the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning about youth for is really um, the importance of young people being able to contribute to decisions that affect them. So in the Spirit context, we wanted to design and deliver programs that impact young people, that engage young people in sport and physical activity, in arts, in volunteering and social action. I applied to be on the Spirit of 2012 Youth Panel um, because I really like events and I think that um, events can have a really big impact and legacy on different areas if they're done right. When I heard about the Spirit of 2012, I just thought it was such a great organisation and the fact that they actually had a youth board to have young people making decisions on charities that would affect young people was something that really excited me. Our roles enabled us to have a really tangible impact because we were part of a lot of decisions that were made not just the major decisions in terms of the um, grant fund that we were responsible for and in charge of. All of us have impacted the organisation by just bringing a youth voice to spirits, but individually I feel like I've brought um, a certain element of remembering people of Midlands and also the North West because they're my two kind of bases, um, but also being a, a neurodivergent person it brings a certain element and an eye and a lens to, to what I provide and what, what views I might have. For me, my first kind of um, exploration into that kind of field of um, participation and decision making and I think certainly since then um, I've been able to use those skills in other roles. So I feel like our opinions always mattered um, but I think the legacy of that is that youth voice is something that's a consideration in Spirit's work going forward um, probably because all of the ideas like all the groups suggested were so good they realised they need to embed that so I think that's the impact of our role. My first youth panel I think Antonia could vouch for that I was quite a nervous um, young person about 18 didn't know what I was doing there didn't know what I was doing with my life to be honest um, we had a few promises that we'd do then and I think we've stuck to that since then the youth panel was super diverse um, and I think that diversity has carried on through this youth panel as well. Not just racial diversity but diversity of thinking, um, diversity of people that are in there. We're quite lucky in our panel that we've had people from the Midlands, North, parts of Ireland, parts of Scotland. So that's been really cool in hearing the different disparities, different issues in different communities as well. And then from a learning perspective, it's really helped me get my mental skills better. So I've been able to work with younger people than me, help older people than me as well. Um, yeah, in the last two and a half years, some of the things that I've learned about supporting communities has really helped me in my job on a day to day. So it's been, it's been amazing. It's quite sad it's coming to an end. Individually, I feel like I've learned a lot more about my self-worth in terms of being like, I don't want to do this because I've already had this experience and I've already learned this, pay me. Um, and I've learned a lot through being on Spirit about what sort of things that I know a lot about and being able to hone in on those skills. Having English as a second language, it was all a learning path. For me especially, it was all a learning path. In every project, in every meeting, every English word spoken. Yeah, I find public speaking quite hard. So me and Carl going into the House of Lords and actually having to present the youth panel and talk about that was a really big challenge for me. But it was amazing coming out at the end of it and thinking, that's something that I've done now and that's something I can do. And even actually in TV, it's something I put on my CV and everyone asks about it. They're like, so you spoke at the House of Lords? So it's one of those really amazing things that you'd never get the chance to do if you weren't on a panel like this. I joined because I wanted to get a bit more grant experience as well. Um, so some of the stuff that we've done in the, in the YAPS main fund, but I got a chance to sit on another fund as well with a lot larger size and like sit down and actually go through grant applications, think about uh, the decision making process behind it and then also following up on things like evaluation and monitoring. The Youth Advisory Panel was really the start of my leadership journey. Um, when I look at the fact that I've now run a social enterprise that's got a team of 13 people and we've worked with over 6,000 young people across the UK, a lot of that I owe to the opportunities that the Youth Advisory Panel gave me. On top of that, the second thing is um, just in terms of some of the stuff that 
we've done with participation people has been really helpful in terms of the mentorship and um, making sure that I can make decisions at the right time and take emotion away from it. I'm a Libra so we can never make our mind up and Antonia's made sure over the last two and a half years that even if uh, I'm dilly-dallying, she gives me the five minutes to make a decision. ...is the way that the, um, the three different cohorts have influenced what they want to do, what they wanted to get out of the experience. They very much brought their own personalities, their own stamp on what the Youth Advisory Panel is, and that's been absolutely brilliant to see. I think my role and the rest of the Youth Advisory Panel's roles um, really has a positive impact on Spirit's work um, and now being part of the board I can see how the YAP has kind of fed into Spirit as an organisation um, and it really is kind of, it's not a token youth panel, the roles that we take on really do impact the organisation and the organisation's work which I think is really important. For other organisations looking to set up a Youth Advisory Panel, I think the first thing is to make sure that you've got the intentions and the resources to match it. There's no point in having a Youth Advisory Panel if you're just going to get a bunch of young people standing at the end of a boardroom. I think what was really good about what Spirit of 2012 done is they got uh, an external expert organisation to help run it. Um, so participation people is really, really useful in terms of making sure that it was going to be impactful. Um, yeah, it's an investment, but at the end of the day, you want to achieve the most impact. They need to be invested in the process, and that's what's been really special about my experiences uh, with Spirit. They've been embedded in the decision making. It's about giving young people autonomy and often backing that with resources to make their own decisions. It wasn't a process where uh, we were kind of there was a parental thing about this is where the money's kept, this is the process and we kind of just have you guys here for branding. We've literally done all of the work and given a lot of the freedom in terms of that. When you go up to a board or when you go up to a director or a company owner, making sure that you know you build a good case behind it. You know, one of the good things that we had to do as part of the panel was taught us how to create like a sort of plan behind what we're doing. And that's the same way that I would approach it if I was then go to youth panels as a result. You know, go and say like for example, here are the benefits here are the challenges, but this is where youth come in and beat the challenges. Be prepared to get some things wrong. A lot of the times organisations have an, an appetite to work with young people, but just because they're so afraid of failure, they won't take that leap of faith. But it's often in the failure or in getting things wrong that you actually improve and have those kind of aha moments. We designed the ground application ourselves, we designed the process ourselves. We actually spent a whole workshop designing like what the name was going to be, what the impact was going to be. So that was, from a best practice point of view, being able to empower the young people is ridiculously important because it means that they're, they're there throughout the whole process. I would say the second most important thing throughout the process has been the freedom that we've been allowed in terms of making those decisions as well. Um, so there were cases in times where us being young people were very empathetic. We maybe kind of lost our way, but it was up to us to kind of bring ourselves back in terms of where we might make that decision, where the money should go. Make sure you make it as diverse as possible, uh, not just in terms of kind of racial diversity or socioeconomic, but more from a cognitive perspective. It was really important that we had a really diverse panel in terms of thinking about the different impact areas that we could have. It's for the group of us to just said, oh, let's just do something down south. But I really appreciate the fact that we thought about, you know, let's make this UK wide. What other issues can, you, can we focus on that haven't been focused on before? I think the important thing is to recognise that this requires energy and it requires prioritisation and it requires a commitment. It's not as easy as you think to facilitate decision making amongst other people, whether that involves getting a third party contractor involved, whether that involves dedicating members of staff, whether that involves dedicating resources and pots of money. Do those things because otherwise you're going to have a process that's not worth anybody's time. We were very grateful to have participation people's support in that. I think it's been a great partnership over the last um, six, seven years uh, between Spirit and participation people. And I think, you know, participation people's uh, knowledge of youth voice and how youth panels are evolving and how to get the best out of young people and being able to come you know, and give spirit feedback about what we're doing and how we could make it better and how we could evolve that journey with the young people was really helpful, so. Um, I think certainly being able to work in a team and to collaborate with your fellow advisory panel members. There were so many great things, obviously having a mentor was brilliant. Um, being a part of the board was brilliant as well. Looking back on it, one thing that I think could have helped would have been to get a better understanding of how the skills that I was developing in the moment had a link to the skills 
of the career that I wanted to build in the future. Um, it would have been great to have got a chance, and to be fair, COVID and some of the restrictions have robbed us on this, but like to have gone out and seen some of my panelists, like geographical communities. So when I say that, like actually gone and spent time where they lived and really seeing some of the issues that are there that I didn't necessarily have a chance to, to experience. I would have loved to have done more public speaking. I think that's really a part that was left out as a youth panel as a whole. You know, how to be a, a good critic um, of um, the types of applications that come forwards when you have call outs or when you um, design a program and you know, how that works itself in itself. I would have appreciated um, meeting the board more originally um, and meeting those cultural gatekeepers. Um, however, I'm now on the board, so am I technically a cultural gatekeeper now? Who knows? I think I would have liked to have gone in and actually visited some more of the projects that we got to fund. I think most people got the opportunity to visit one or two, but I think it would have been nice to do a bit more visits and have a bit more kind of face time with the, with the rest of the panel, especially in the first year. Having a young person on the board, having numerous young people on the board, so we started with Carl, and then uh, Michaela came and joined the board and then Sana really gave our board members confidence in the ability of young people to be directors, to sit around that table as equals, to make their contribution. If we did it again, I would just want to look at the balance between designing and developing that funding round and contributing more broadly to what Spirit's doing. I will never forget the day where we were debating over how we were essentially going to use the pot of funding that we had been allocated to create our own project. And the room lit up at one point when everyone was talking about all of the various things that they're passionate about, all of the different demographics of society that they wanted to help and change. And I stood back for a second and just watched everyone get excited with flip chart paper, with post-it notes on the whiteboard. And I thought to myself, this is it. This is exactly why the Youth Advisory Panel is here. I think my happiest memory was visiting a project that was based in Derry, Londonderry in Northern Ireland and it was called Reading Rooms. Uh, over my time at Spirit I must have done maybe four or five visits to Reading Rooms and watching the young people who were involved in that process uh, throughout their journey with Reading Rooms was really inspirational, it was truly humbling watching the benefits of this programme first hand because it's so easy to kind of sit where we are maybe in, in parts of London or, or sit and chat on Zoom calls with other young people at, at the youth advisory panel level but actually seeing where the benefit is going, see where the money is going and seeing where the people who are actually at the front line of these issues, uh, that, that's something you just can't replace and, and I'll never forget that. Uh, for most of the projects that I've looked at with Spirit, Access hasn't been an add-on, it's been embedded from the get-go and then in my own kind of personal freelance practice being added on as the extra is quite disheartening when you come here and then you're like okay no it's here from the start and I think as well Spirit consider access not just in terms of disability um, in terms of any reason as to why you may find it harder to attend an event or, or a program etc and doing that then makes it easier for disabled people to go I need this request I need this thing I can't get on buses actually I can't do this thing and if you're vacant open to everybody, it just helps encourage disabled people to be able to do it without feeling like they're asking for special requests. One of the ones that we funded was the Plymouth Music Project. Um, I thought that was, a, I've worked for a lot of music projects before, that was kind of mainly what a lot of my youth work had been based on. So that project really appealed to me and we managed to give them funding and we saw as the kind of two years that I was on the panel, them actually managing to use that money and expand and I've been following them ever since I left so it's been really nice to see how that money has really helped that project grow. Um, and hopefully being a better leader, understanding teams, understanding the strengths, understanding where each other can improve on. And I've had great guidance from Antonia and participation people on where I can improve on my own um, skills and abilities. Um, it's absolutely magical actually, so going to the great get together in Slough with James, going to Creative Arts East in Norfolk with Davy, they've got lots of other examples but I think seeing them understand the real impact of the decisions they've helped to shape on other people uh, is the most, yeah, that's provided me with the happiest memories of the Youth Advisory Panel. The community around you shifts and changes according to what you contribute. So if you're prepared to contribute your time, if you're prepared to contribute with your commitment, with your opinions, that's how you can create change in your local community. Um, walking through life on a day-to-day -day basis, expecting change 
to be done by those who are quote unquote in power or those who are quote unquote decision makers is not good enough. We live in a day and age where you've got opportunity to have your voices heard, whether that's on a youth panel, a youth committee, a youth board. It's really, really important now to take power back in your hands by contributing in your local community. Um, so I just say do it. My happiest memory is definitely our first residential that we had as a panel. Um, a couple of our panel weren't at that because they hadn't joined yet, which is really sad. Um, but some of my favourite memories were just really meeting everybody and how quickly we gelled as a team. Um, by the end of the kind of first night, it felt like we'd known each other for a really long time. So I think that really helped them when we went to kind of work on our goals and objectives as a panel um, to really make sure that we were getting to the heart of what we wanted to do really quickly. So gelling as a team really fast is definitely probably my favourite memory. Oh, meeting everyone, um, meeting loads of people who care, meeting people across the country, meeting people from different views and lenses and different cultures and also just different sectors as well. Youth panels are great because they bring people together, they bring skills together, people like-minded, people who are doing great things already as individuals, coming to something even, even bigger than that, I think it's pretty amazing. <laughs>